Here at Mark Metrics, we specialize in manufacturing devices called Raman spectrometers. These systems are able to deliver us detailed information about what something is made of from a chemical perspective. In this video, Mark Metrics CEO and founder, Dr. Brian Marquardt, is going to explain what Raman spectroscopy is, its history, how it works, and give some examples of how companies today are using it to improve their processes. Hi, I'm Brian Marquardt. I'm a founder and CEO of Mark Metrics. Uh, my background is of a PhD in analytical chemistry. I've been doing ramen for 20 plus years in industrial, industrial processing and processes. For the first approximately 15 years, I was in the solutions business. Uh, I worked at the University of Washington Applied Physics Lab. I'm also the director of CPAC, the Center for Process Analysis and Control at the University of Washington. And I worked with industrial sponsors to solve industrial problems using Raman spectroscopy. A Raman spectrum is functionally a fingerprint of a molecule described by its molecular bonds and how they vibrate when excited by a laser. Anyone that knows me has probably seen this demonstration before. My favorite is Raman spectroscopy, as we mentioned previously, we require a laser for excitation and I require a molecule to be basically interrogated. My laser interacts with my molecule it causing it to vibrate. We're looking at vibrational spectroscopy, which is what Raman spectroscopy is. But when I punch that molecule with the laser, I generate vibrations. Those vibrations, sort of indicated by the different lengths of my fingers, are the different molecular bonds within that molecule. When I punch that molecule, most all of the energy is elastically scattered back in the form of the same frequency of the laser but there's a little bit of energy imparted into that molecule and lost into generating these very specific vibrations. And that's known as the Raman effect. What that means is with my different molecules actually vibrating, they are at different frequencies or different energies to make that vibration occur. And that's what allows us to generate a spectrum or a series of lines in very specific places that indicate what a molecule is then the very interesting part is the intensity of those bands also allows to say the concentration. It's traditionally, it's always been very sciencey. It's been lab equipment that's taken to process. Uh, it's been finicky when you detach scientists to the hardware traditionally. And that's one of the things we tried to do at Mark Metrics is take the scientist out of the science to allow us to build solid state, incredibly stable hardware that we can start to think about more as a sensor and less as an instrument when we put it in place. So I can set it and forget it and expect it to do what it's supposed to do for very long times without need to look at it, need to calibrate it, or need to think about it because it functionally does what it's supposed to do all day, every day. When we started Mark Metrics, we wanted to deliver robust process hardware that didn't take up much space, had the same performance as the status quo, and allowed us to take advantage of our ROM and ball probe technology, which is functionally touch a sample and make a measurement without need to think about it. There's no subjectivity. Almost everything we do is objective, so it means we can transfer that technology and capability simply to our customers. So C.V. Raman, back in the 20s, got the Nobel Prize for Raman spectroscopy for observations of Raman, but it never really became um, a highlighted science until the development of the laser. So the fundamental single frequency laser source is kind of what made the theory of Raman spectroscopy possible. And now that we can buy, you know, diode lasers that came a lot of, a lot of the development that came up in the late 90s was during the semi, semiconductor revolution for semiconductor lasers. That kind of was the thing that kicked off Raman spectroscopy and some of the other developments that followed, including detector technology and moving into CMOS now. But primarily, the laser is what allows us to do what we can do. Stable, single frequency lasers are imperative for us to get very good high resolution Raman spectra. So some of the primary applications of Raman spectroscopy today are primarily in pharma and biopharma. Um, I've been working in those fields probably since the early 2000s. I worked with the FDA PAT team early on describing how Raman can be actually included in real-time analysis to improve process quality and control with the FDA. 
One of our big pushes was the focus on Raman spectroscopy and the amount of information and capability that can be provided in real time, so that means in seconds, while manufacturing, processing, and actually in development of pharmaceuticals. We're doing much the same thing in the biopharma business now. Um, Real-time measurements and fermentation, um, looking downstream at proteins as they loot off of columns, and actually just understanding and optimizing fermentations, the actual feeds, as well as the products coming off. So making measurements in all of those individual places. That's also the same on the pharmaceutical side. Looking at the liquid side of the API, the active pharmaceutical ingredients, all the way to the final product, whether it be powder, liquid, um, some of it are, are heterogeneous solutions. Um, we can look at much of anything when it comes to sample type with Raman spectroscopy, and it's one of Mark Metric's specialties, is sampling. Our interface technology allows us to look at liquid, solids, slurries, gases, paste, gels, powders. It doesn't really matter. Of course, there's a huge range of applications for Raman that we continue to detail further on our website. Be sure to follow our social media pages to learn more about Mark Metrics and our unique approach to process ramen. If you have any questions, check out our website or send us an email. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more ramen content, and thanks for watching.